Russ Kickle on this episode of American Reef. We're going to talk the Smart Controller 7000 by Tunzee. So before we talk the Tunzee Smart Controller 7000, on the last video that I put out, Mike Paletta had mentioned about controlling cyanobacteria with hydrogen peroxide. Well that one comment kind of flooded my inbox. If you were one of the viewers who actually asked, hey, give me more details about that, just head on over to reef to reef and just check out or search for cyanobacteria and you know, uh, hydrogen peroxide and you'll kind of find several threads on there that kind of talk about the specifics. Uh, to summarize, I believe it's one ml per every 10 gallons. You dose it every 12 hours. I believe it's basically before the lights go on and after the lights go off. And you do that for approximately two weeks. Um, again, don't use that as kind of a gospel. Go out, basically search those threads, get the specifics, because you don't want to crash your tank um, because of basically misinformation. Uh, long story made short though, that's kind of the gist of what that method is. Um, and again, uh, you can always reach Mike via Facebook. He's always on there. You can kind of reach out to him and kind of ask him the specifics of maybe that tank and how he's doing it as well. <music> So the first thing we should probably do is just talk about like what kind of controller is it, right? What can it actually control? Um, and to me, it's like the perfect baseline kind of controller, meaning um, it's got a temperature probe, for example, so we know we can control things based on temperature. We know it's got a pH probe, so I shouldn't say probe, port, so that means we can attach a probe to it and measure and control things based on pH. So that means like a calcium reactor and things of that nature, right? We've got four other channels in there. So we're going to control things like switch sockets, for example, um, or lighting, for example, if you have the Tunzi LED lighting, um, or Trebelli pumps, those kind of things. Uh, but for me, for example, I've got a video that's coming out um, where what I'm doing is I'm showing how this is a great little controller for I have a nano tank. Um, where I control my circulation, I've got a skimmer on there, I've got some, uh, some tons of LEDs on there, and this is a great controller to kind of manipulate that whole environment on there. Um, currently I'm using it as a quarantine tank. It's not the ultimate quarantine tank, but it's perfect in my particular case. Um, now keep in mind, so it's a great controller for that. Um, if you're comparing it to something, for example, that has been on the market for, you know, again, a decade that controls all kind of aspects of, you know, of your tank and, and allows you to do various kind of, you know, we'll call it call home kind of monitoring features. This is not, you know, there yet. Will it be there in the future? I have no doubt, but this is not that kind of product. And again, that's why we're doing these videos. So we have kind of a level set of where this sits in relationship to those other kind of controllers. And those Number units. two, keep in mind that since this is a newly designed product, right, the interface is truly designed to kind of be accessed from a mobile device, meaning it's kind of modern in design. And I think you'll find out that even though it's got an, an interface panel on the front of the controller and you can access it from any web browser, from your computer, for anywhere, right? You'll find out that your best viewing kind of experience is going to be from your mobile device, whether it's a, an Apple or an Android device, right? You'll, I think you'll find out that when you're on your iPad or your Android or whatever kind of, you know, kind of, again, mobile device, you'll find out that I think that in general, moving around mobility and stuff like that, it'll flow a lot better, right? And again, 
it's one of those things where um, for me, since I hooked it up to my computer first, right, I found that going that route, it was kind of easy. But then when I migrated it over to uh, my mobile device, that's when I was just like, wow, this is really freaking awesome when I, when I was going that way. And when I kind of made that revelation, that's when, to me, um, I started working from there constantly and working from there constantly, it just made the world of difference. Now this third area kind of ties into the second area, meaning that mobile interface, right, whether it's from a tablet or from your smartphone, right, how do you get access to it? Well, you connect to it, right? Meaning the Smart Controller 7000 has Wi-Fi access built into it. So basically, when you go to your network settings, you'll find out that you can access this Smart Controller, right? Once you actually access the Smart Controller, all you'll do is you'll open up a web browser. From that web browser, you'll put in an IP address. From that IP address, from there, you'll kind of have that interface. And again, you'll be able to access that interface from any computer, right? Um, but again, from the smartphone or from your tablet, it tends to flow a little bit better. And the very first thing you'll want to do once you kind of access that interface is you'll want to set your time and you want to upgrade your firmware. And there's kind of two main reasons why you, you want to do that. The reason why you want to set your time, number one, is when you're in there diddling around, you know, setting automatic schedules to do this, that, and the other, well, if you don't have the correct time, right, and you're messing around with lights, for example, um, or, you know, socks to come on off, or, or whatever that is, if your time's not set right, you're going to be troubleshooting and it's just not going to work, right? And you'll, you'll beat your head against the wall, right? And you'll realize that, again, never set the correct time. Second, as far as your firmware, the reason why you need that upgraded is because, especially with this being a Gen 1 kind of product, well, it's going to come out of the factory and there may be certain kind of error messages, etc. Um, and they may be in Germany, or German, excuse me, not Germany. And, um, and basically, you'll want to get those in whatever language you choose because, again, this is a multi-language kind of unit. So, um, you know, once you kind of set your correct language in there, you want to make sure that the error messages, etc., kind of follow along in there. So by upgrading to the latest, greatest firmware, it'll make sure it'll kind of catch it through there. Things that maybe they didn't catch originally when the first units were shipped out of the uh, factory. That, and again, we know with all technology, like we've, you know, heard through various episodes, we catch, we catch errors along the way and it's fixed through those. And the thing to keep in mind when upgrading the firmware with the Tunzi controllers, when you take and drop the firmware unit onto, or excuse me, the firmware package onto um, the controller, it will do everything for you. There's no kind of submit and restart and all that. It does all that for you. So once you select it, just let it go, right? And it will automatically reboot the system for you, right? From a controller perspective, right, all you need to do to find out if basically it's ready to go is just put that IP address back into the browser, right? Don't just click refresh because for the refresh, it's gonna wanna do a reboot, right? Because it's still gonna have that kind of command in there up in the URL, right? Just put in that IP address, right? Um, but again, Basically, the engineers over at Tunzi have done a great job at making sure that everything is automatic and easy. So from your end of it, just again, select the file and it will do everything for you. That's the other thing that's kind of really refreshing, at least as it relates to kind of upgrading the, upgrading the firmware here. Uh, I know on the kind of, you know, call, we'll call it the classic firmware of the Neptune Apex, you know, basically it was frowned upon on upgrading any firmware wirelessly. Um, you always had to find computers, cables, and things of that nature, um, you know, and, and, and it was just a real nightmare to try to upgrade firmware, right, uh, wirelessly. You always had to, uh, again, jump through hoops, whereas with this particular controller, it was built and made to do that sort of thing. Um, and so keep in mind, again, third area, what you want to do is after you connect to this unit, you want to take, set your time, and again, you want to take, upgrade the firmware. In parentheses, you also want to make sure you set your language as well. 
So the fourth area that's worth discussing, or at least mentioning here, is how the Tunzi manages kind of circulation or at least pumps. If you've ever used a previous version of the controller, it's kind of the same general philosophy, only a different interface. And the idea is simple. Uh, basically, what it does or what its goal to do is to create, or I should say easily create, natural flow patterns. And it does this by either creating pulses, right, or basically intervals, and you break those pulses or those interval kind of flow patterns up with storm modes or night modes or feeding modes, right? Um, and, um, and, and what you won't find in kind of any of these controller options is like a timer kind of window to break up those modes or to kind of distribute those modes right, in a timed fashion, meaning like from 10 to 11 do this, from 12 to one do this, that kind of thing, right? Like that kind of micromanagement. And the rationale behind that is simple. Like from an engineering perspective, what they did is they followed study after study that kind of showed the fact that out on the reef, those patterns never changed really that often, right? Especially from an hour to hour perspective. And the idea was, you know, the best coral growth, right, and coral health that we could see was to basically repeat or to try to copy those parameters in our environment. And ultimately that's what they try to do. So you won't have that ability to kind of micromanage that. Um, you know, the, the interesting part is in that interface, when you see that, um, you'll, you'll see that the drop down will give you the ability to create the pulses. So for example, if you wanted to go through and do that kind of internal wave, right? Um, you can do that. And there's auto timing features, which we're all kind of at least used to, et cetera. And um, the interesting part that, at least for me, that it took a second to get used to um, at least playing with that interface is everything is real time. Meaning there's no taking, setting, uploading to the units and then seeing it work on the actual tank itself. When you move it, it actually sends it down to the, con or excuse me, sends it from the controller down to the unit. So that means it works and it's real time, which is really interesting. Um, so again, it took a little bit of getting used to, right? It get, getting used to number one that A, there was, not a timetable on there, but then B, it was real time when you set it to make a two second pause, for example, in between pulses, you set it and it just did it and there was no uploading. So similar to the uh, uploading of the firmware, for example, everything's just kind of real time and it does it for you. And um, again, it's just worth mentioning, worth noting, that way when you are setting, you know, the, the pulses or the intervals, etc. Uh, again, you'll, you'll notice it right away and you'll be probably looking for submit buttons and things of that, that nature and they're just not there. It just works for you, which is really cool. Um, another item worth mentioning, at least as it goes to circulation, um, Roger Vitko, we did a vi video with Roger probably three-ish months ago. Um, he talked about the new Stream 3s and how he set his up and how he uses the interval mode. And so it's worth going back and checking that video out as well so you can kind of see how he set his controller up and how he's using it on that relatively large reef. area and I didn't figure this out until probably a good two weeks into this that um, you know this smart controller 7000 <laughs> emphasis on smart meaning um, these basically these channels they really are smart meaning one channel at any point in time can control lights it can control pumps it can control switch sockets it can control all kind of things and with that kind of variability in mind um, you know it will maybe display a different interface depending on what's plugged in. And so what that means is it can be confusing to look at and to just 
kind of figure out what you've got plugged in. And as such, documenting is just extremely important. So what that means is like to me, before you plug in that controller, what you want to do is basically take, plug in all those cables and you know what they're plugged into, whether it's you know pumps, lights, sockets, whatever those things are, and then take a piece of tape rub it you know excuse me wrap it around you know that cable and write down what it is and then when you power up the controller there's a little basically up in the top left hand corner there's a uh, an icon that kind of documents what channel they are and then you can actually take and write it on there and then when you are working in the interface it will make configuring so much easier um, again it, it Took me a while to figure that out and I'm not sure why. Um, but it's one of those things where it truly will make configuring everything with this controller just uh, a, a breeze. And again, that's why I put this video together because it took me a while for it to sink in and then hopefully it'll make your life a little bit easier. And, uh, and that, to me, that's kind of the, the five areas that I think um, before you get this controller, you know, just listening to this video after you kind of listen to that and you don't do that, it'll save a lot of time basically setting it up. And again, I think it'll ultimately make the whole process much smoother for you. And after you kind of play with the controller a little bit, let me know what you think of it. And uh, if you find any additional tips or tricks, let me know. Again, that's American Reef at me.com. And as always, if you're looking for what I consider the best fish food on a planet, check out American Reefs HPD, which is AmericanReefHPD.com. And as always, you've heard me say, support my sponsors because they are the best in the business. That's Bulk Reef Supply, Premium Aquatics, Tunzi, right? Ecosystems.